Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game played between the 5th Women's World Chess Champion Nona Gaprindashvili and Hungarian Chess International Master and later a Woman Grandmaster Zsuzsa Verioci. The game was played in 1974 in Belgrade. In this game Gaprindashvili had white pieces and she opened up with e4. Verioci answered with e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Rui Lopez is on the board, a6, Morphe defense, and we see the exchange variation. D takes c6, white castle, king side, queen d6. Other popular alternatives are f6, bishop g4, bishop d6, queen f6 can be also seen very often. But in the game we see queen d6, with which Blake is both protecting the central e pawn and at the same time is preparing an immediate castling queen side bishop e3 bishop e6 knight bd2 and already on move 8 we see opposite side castlings which as you know leads to a very sharp game queen e2 g5 there we have it already Black is starting a kingside pawn push and wants to target white king as soon as possible meanwhile white is centralizing his heavy artillery on the queen side and he's starting to support the advance of the queen side pawns knight g6 a4 g4 knight e1 knight f4 in return Blake is also not losing a precious time and is playing very aggressively queen d1 b6 well uh, b6 seems to be a bit passive approach which at the same time is weakening the queen side h5 is better if b5 then c5 if b takes a6 then queen takes a6 and black is doing great instead we see b6 here comes c4 white is sacrificing the d pawn which black accepted after which another pawn sacrifice followed and at the cost of sacrificing two pawns white managed to open up the queen side this b file is already open black's queen side shattered and of course all this allow white to proceed with a successful attack Bishop e7, knight c4, bishop takes c4, queen takes c4, queen e6. Of course, white will never accept the offer of exchange of queens. And knight b7. At this point, Stockfish suggests an interesting exchange sacrifice in order to neutralize the dark squared bishop, but uh, Variozzi had different ideas and she played knight b7. Rook b2, c5. Uh, other alternative is bringing the knight on c4. Instead, we see c5, rook a b1, knight d6, bishop takes c5, king d7. Uh, so already, Black is looking for a safe shelter for his king, and now Black king will uh, move towards the king side. Bishop takes d6, bishop takes d6, knight d3. Finally, White is also centralizing his knight, and meanwhile. Black king is leaving the battlefield. Rook b7, rook d7, rook a7, and rook d8, which is a strange move. Rook h d8 is better, or bishop a3. For example, you can simply play rook h d8, and if knight c5, then bishop takes c5, and then king f7. If here, then king g6. Black has a very solid position. Instead we see rook dd8 move. Here comes knight c5 and bishop takes c5. At this point giving out the dark squared bishop which is playing a huge defensive role is very bad. Queen c8 could allow black to put a tougher resistance. Instead we see bishop takes c5. Queen takes c5 check king f7. Yeah, after bishop takes c5 black's position goes down very quickly. Queen g7 check king h5. On the surface it may seem that uh, announcing a checkmate is just a matter of moves, but uh, in reality it's not that easy. Rook e7, queen b3. A beautiful move, right? Relying on the back rank weakness. Rook f1, and there comes a rook d1. Suddenly black got a very nice counterattack. And white has to be very careful. Of course, you can give an easy perpetual check, but Gaprindashvili was looking for a winning line and she played h3, which is an absolutely precise move. Now, if uh, g takes h3, then white can announce a quick checkmate. And then queen g5 checkmate. That's why at this point black played rook takes f1 check. Of course, if you recapture, then you will get checkmate. That's why we see this forced king h2 move. 
G3 check, which allows white to announce a forced mate. Uh, playing rook h1 check followed by queen b1, queen e4 could prolong black's resistance. Instead we see g3 check, f takes g3, queen e3. Black is covering this essential h6 square because already white was threatening g4 followed by queen h6 checkmate. And quite possibly at this point already Kaprindashvili was in a serious time trouble and she decided to give a perpetual check. After queen g7 check, we have a draw because once we are playing king h5, threefold repetition appears on the board. Uh, once again, I have to tell you that I failed to find any information about the time trouble, but quite possibly, yes, Gaprin Dashvili was in a serious time trouble, otherwise I'm sure that uh, in a blink of a second she could find the mating line. The one who finds h3 could find that line as well. At this point, please pause the video and try to find how uh, white can announce checkmate in 5 moves. Let me remove the arrows and leave you with a hard task. Ready? It turns out that rook takes e5 allows white to win on the spot. The idea is to open up this diagonal. Once the f-pawn is lured away, already you can play g4 check and then queen e7 check and then you can announce a check made with a pawn. Yeah, that's a pity that Gaprin Dashvili missed this line and at this point uh, she gave a perpetual check. Instead it was good to play rook takes e5. With a double rook sacrifice she could create a brilliant masterpiece. Anyways, even in this case the game remains very beautiful and hope that you enjoyed it. In the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for black. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.